Hey, what is happening, Mr. Mark Naked Willie? What's going on, brother? Oh, man, I feel like a, a sound effect kind of BS Friday, Dave. Uh, so great to see you all spiffed up in your sport coat, and I'm wearing a T-shirt, brother. <laughs> hey, listen, that's the, way, that's the way we roll, right? That's the way we roll. So, hey, listen, Mark, I mean, it's been a busy couple weeks for you. It's been a busy couple weeks for, for us on this end. Uh, and what a refreshing way to round out a couple busy weeks by having our next guest on. I mean, we're talking a bundle of just happiness and joy that's passionate. I had a chance, you know, before the show here to spend a little bit of time and I'm like, oh, my God, you just make me feel so good. <laughs> no, she's uh, she's a wonder. Everyone's probably wondering uh, who's coming on. So uh, the, 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 the fun part for me, Dave, is. So many events happen, you know, in Chicago over the years. Yeah. And and you do what you can to get to them. And it seems like every single event I went to, standing right next to me, like without having to plan it, it was a perfect plan. It was Juanita. And like just, uh, well, there, now we know who's on the show today. But uh, Breath well, of Fresh Air is exactly too. right, brother. <laughs> well, it truly is. So this is going to be a great conversation. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, this this carbon disaster that we have and all the cool things that uh, Juanita is working on. So I'm looking forward to have her on. But first, we are live, Mark. We are live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch and Twitter. And if you are not out there liking and sharing right now to let the world know we are live, please go and do that. We will update the titles and all the search functionalities of this post as we keep moving through the show here. But Mark. We're reaching a lot of people. We're out and about. We're doing awesome things. I'm really excited about this. And we got the holidays coming up. And hey, I, I, I want to start promoting it, Mark. We got to start promoting the cat in the hat. We got to start oh, the promoting cat in the, the hat. Cat in the hat yeah. So we can get everybody signed up so they can bring their kids on while you and I read Dr. Seuss Cat in the Hat for our Christmas annual special that we do every year. I do have to get to a thrift store, Dave, and order another book because, uh, you know, last year was such a hit, and uh, I, one of the kids took my book. So I got to get a hat and a yeah. book because, you know, I had the whole costume thing, and I had the book, and one of the kids, you know, in the excitement of the holidays, is like, I'm taking that. So, uh, <laughs> yep. Well, anyway. hey, listen. All right, we have doc. I got kids. I got Dr. Seuss books. We'll pick one, and uh, we can run with it. I think last year was great. Green eggs and ham. Yeah. So uh, we got we got plenty of options. All right. Speaking of green eggs and ham, or, or was it the Grinch? It was, was the, it was the Grinch we read, wasn't it? Or was it green eggs and ham? I don't know. Anyway, Dave, maybe it was. Uh, the Grinch. Good thing it's recorded. We can go back and look. Yeah, YouTube actually has a copy of all this stuff. So, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, Dave Cooper live and chill. Right. Just. Go to Dave Cooper Live and start watching them. That's it. Grab grab your cup of coffee and, and go to town. Just listen to all the knowledge that we're bringing to the table from BS Friday. And it's a ton of knowledge. Uh, and, and last week was no difference. All right. So let's get into this, Mark. Without further ado, why don't you make the introduction to Juanita Garcia? That's who's coming on. But you know her best, Mark, because you're hanging out and rubbing shoulders with some of the smartest people out there in the building science world. And she is tasked with a pretty important job at her company. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and give her the intro? Yep. So um, there's leaders out there and there's leaders out there with big hearts and big personalities. Um, Juanita has it. She lights up a room with her smile and and uh, and she brings a sense of uh, of joy to a very technical part of the world. Um, so coming from the the BIM and the and the 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 LCAs and the EPDs, right? The list of acronyms are gonna fly out today and Dave's gonna call us to stop. She's got them. She's got them on her multiple screens. She's got them on this in, in incredible brain. And uh I'm thrilled to to have uh, a virtual meeting with Juanita because we can't have one in person yet. Juanita, welcome to BS Friday. We're happy to have you. Hey, what's hey. happening? What's happening, Juanita? 
Oh, I'm, I'm excited to join you today. Uh, it's beautiful out <laughs> here in Barrington. Um, I'm excited to join you. You guys are have a fun show. So I'm excited yeah. to, 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 especially when there's an opportunity to make stuff that can be really technical, really fun. So Yeah. yeah. Fun. But fun is something we like to have on this show. And I have to tell you, Mark, when she had her blinds open for the show, she sits directly. There's this beautiful American flagpole right behind her out her window. But we were getting too much sunlight in. So got it. Well, so all right, well, Anita, listen. Salute to the flag. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, just being Veterans Day. Happy uh, Veterans Day, or you know, and uh, we appreciate all you veterans that are out there and everything that you do. So you know, we are after Veterans Day. So there you go. It was to uh, you as well, Dave. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Well, Anita, we're got, we got to hop into this. I, I mean, there's a there's a lot to unpack, so we need to start unpacking some of this stuff and really get into it. And with that said, we want to know everything about you from the moment you were born. Mark, were you going to say something? I saw Mark getting ready to say something. I, I, I was. I was wondering if you can move the screen around because uh, Juanita should be up there and I should be floating on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, well, listen, I was going to say something. <laughs> Well, you know, Mark, I'm getting better at this stuff. When when <laughs> when Nita goes full screen, I was gonna flip you around, but okay. you know, that's perfect. He's, he's absolutely right, Winita. I'm I'm making excuses, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's hop into it, Winita. We want to know everything about you from the moment you were born to this very moment in time. Do not leave out any of the good stuff from mm -hmm. the hospital, because Mark Willie's mother, Diane, is watching this show, and she will call your mother, and we're gonna have your mother on the show without you. And she's going to tell us all the good stuff because people just like to do that. So you only have two minutes to do it, Juanita. So hop right into it. All right. Well, <laughs> I, if uh, if you were to ask my mother, I think the first thing she'd say is that uh, she'd remind because she doesn't hesitate to remind me that I was a breech baby and that she was in labor for 36 hours before I was born. <laughs> but uh, that aside, uh, kind of skipping through some less interesting parts, um, you know, I guess we, we talked a little bit about. Uh, earlier about my experience in the industry and where I started. Um, I originally started in mechanical design um, and uh, was at, for a couple of years and in about 2008, I worked on a lead project and that changed everything. You know, up until that point, um, you know, people were just occupants were just uh, a number you plug into load calculations. Um, and then, you know, I had the experience of working on a lead project and started to think about uh, what that means for the occupant experience and human health and being able to address um, health and wellness in the built environment, but also addressing um, environmental health too and environmental impact um, with the choices of materials and the choices of design and reducing energy, you know, and water and and material waste. Um, so that's where I started. I went on to, um, after that lead project, I went on to to study um, ma uh, massage therapy to get a better understanding of, of human health. Um, and then went on to study psychology in the Netherlands, uh, again, and make that like mind and body connection to health and wellness. Um, and I also got a real sense of human rights too while I was there in the Netherlands. And, and it's the sense of um, health and well being as a human right. So that was my experience there. And then when came back to Chicago, um, native Chicagoan, uh, born and raised here, other than a couple of jumps um, studying uh, in other places. And then uh, um, when I met Mark, I was working on a tech startup idea. I'd gotten picked up by a tech incubator uh, working on a BIM for uh, uh, sustainable building design. Um, idea. It originally started as a as trying to use um, after the demolition debris diversion ordinance in Cook County was passed, trying to find a way to make um, make existing building materials and reclaim building materials easier to use. But ultimately, I'm in uh, in Barrington at Pepper, working on high performance and carbon drawdown. Awesome! I didn't know the Netherlands part. Yeah. Uh, boy. It, there had to be some sort of culture shock coming yeah. back to the States, right? Yeah. I mean, when you're there, you're there. It's experiential. But coming back, right? Total culture shock. Yeah. 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 Sure. But it, yeah. It's funny when you think about sustainability and how much of it is cultural. 
Um, we're seeing that too, COP26 too, right? In different countries and, and their approaches to sustainability can be very different. And some of it's just cultural. Yeah, well said. A great reference to, to, to COP. Yeah, everyone that speaks, there's a much different story they're telling because mm -hmm. that's your context. That's your reference. And we're gl great to have yours today. This is, this is a sweet warm up, Dave. <laughs> It, you know, it is a sweet warm up and we always go back to these passions and people's beliefs on health and wellness come from their own experiences. And and that's kind of what I heard in your story is, you know, all these experiences has led you to doing what you're doing right now um, and being in touch not only with what's happening from an environmental standpoint, but also being in touch, you know, with 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 oneself and body. Right. And spirit. Right. That's where the massage right. therapy and all that comes in. Um, and I think, you know, combining that passion of, you know, mind, body and spirit, along with what's happening in the environment, I mean, gives you a perspective of, you know, I'm not like just looking at this from data. I'm actually looking at it from how one reacts, feels to the environment around them or hands on them. Right. Or in your case or what have you. So I think this is really cool. Why don't you can you jump into this, what you're working on a little bit at Pepper Construction? Sure. Like what is so we're really good at talking to ourselves, Juanita. Mark and I, mm -hmm. we, we can communicate so well together, but sometimes we have all these other people out there trying to learn our language and trying to understand what we're doing. And those are the people we're truly, really trying to reach out to, to broaden uh, this, this better environment and built environment that we're always looking for. So break down, you know, why you're doing this with Pepper Construction. What's the value, not only for the company, but also what's the value to the occupants that would be, you, you know, mm -hmm getting the value out of this research? Yeah, so uh, we're working on, uh, working towards carbon drawdown um, for our clients and our on and, and projects. And the thing is, it's it's multifaceted in the uh, when it comes to the health impact. So one of them is, you know, when you're using healthier materials with low VOCs, um, materials that, that have, um, that have less of a, of an impact on the environment, um, and in the, the occupant space, it, you have um, occupants that are healthier overall because they're not breathing in bad stuff. Um, and and also the that stuff, the bad stuff isn't also having an impact on the environment. But also when you're reducing that energy use, um, that means there's less demand for energy. Um, there's less carbon emissions to generate that energy. So that you have that health impact in, 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 at the building level, but also in the greater community level as well. So at, at, at Pepper, to extrapolate further, because it's a great mm -hmm. starting block that uh, at, at Pepper, your projects specifically are commercial based, right? So right. large volume spaces, mm -hmm. big square footage. So for a reference point for the audience, uh, like a project now, can we just pick one, like a school or, or what yeah. can't, would that be a fair place to start? Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, we've been working across industries or across markets, right? So we've been working on schools. Uh, we've been working on commercial spaces um, to work towards commercial um, carbon drawdown. Um, yeah. Schools, university, um, schools uh, and, and, um, university buildings as well so it's across industry definitely but um you know it's all really it has an impact on anywhere we work play or I think learn if we start yeah. if if we just start at a school campus mm -hmm. that way whatever building people are used to we start there and and we know that the materials that are used on the walls and the roofs and the floors right now are already more airtight than we're mm -hmm. used to because of of that operational energy you're right. trying to drop but subsequently your daily activity is 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 referencing each of those products not only that go to the to the whole assembly envelope but on the in interior like you mentioned because the building is tight and yes there's air exchanges there's a whole ventilation strategy folks we're not stepping over that but because of that uh, we know that these materials, uh, you mentioned VOCs, so bowed organic compounds, um, that they're, they're off gassing and they're, and they're leaching over time that the plasticizers and elasticizers go out of them. So 
you're you're monitoring ahead of time, right? In right. in in the ether, uh, what those effects will be, both positive and otherwise. So if they're needed to be used in the project, you have a sense of the the capacity it's using and the effect it's going to have uh, for the human health and uh, for. Um, uh, I lost the end, but right. That's the, the crux of it. And that's a huge monumental task. Right. And that's right. just one project. Right. It, right. So we're, you know, and we're largely dependent on what manufacturers are willing to disclose. Right. We're, 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 we're largely dependent on that. And um, one thing that's really helped is these building certifications have helped um, drive and designers and architects have been driving manufacturers to start disclosing that information and getting that third party verified. You know, so things like testing for VOCs, just saying all the materials, everything that's in their materials and what could p potentially have um, a an impact that can potentially be harmful, um, you know, both in manufacturing and all the way through to, to, um, to that occupant in having been installed in the space. So we have the EPDs, Dave, right? Acronym time, <laughs> environmental product declaration, right? Dave loves these acronyms because we <laughs> often make up what they mean. But then the next one is LCA, the life yeah. cycle analysis. And while you're looking for this because you're concerned about delivering over and above for the client, but you're you're concerned about the people that will are intended to use the building and the people that later on will own the building and use it then. So right. you're you're creating scenarios based off of what will be in life. And you touched on the greatest point, Dave. And and she said not all manufacturers have that information or know where to get it to pass it on. That's a dilemma, Juanita. Yeah, that is a huge problem. It is. It really is. You know, Mark, I, I, I'm looking at the, the Pepper website, and this is this is what I think is uh, powerful. I mean, their statements on their site, you know, are saying buildings have a profound effect on how we live, work, and play. The Pepper's values demand that we turn this big idea into action. We promise to ensure the choices we make today impact the future of our built environment to create a better quality of life for all. That's the promise of tomorrow transform. So how cool is that? That's a mission step. I think we need another applause, right? Like, Oh, I got an applause. <laughs> you know, so I, I got it. You, you know how many people out there are, we're trying to write down that, what you were saying. So we'll, we'll add, we'll add the pepper website uh, yeah. to the chat there. Uh, so that this. people, there you go. This is great. Um, this example for someone as large as pepper that does as many projects as pepper does, that is really exceptional. Um, mm -hmm. I can tell you when I first got into green, there wasn't a single general contractor that knew how to say that sentence, let alone have it on the website, Juanita. What a remarkable era we're living in. Mm -hmm. you're, you know what? You're right, Mark. And I'm going to go into that with Juanita, too, because I used to say I, I did a lead certified house back in 2007, 2008 time frame. In New wait, Jersey. wait, Dave. Yeah. Soapbox time. You built that off site and delivered it. Soapbox time. You know what, Mark? 100% right on that one, my friend. I we did back and that's going that's going back 2002, you know, 7 2008 time frame. We built the first modular offsite lead uh silver certified lead home in New Jersey. But I used to always say back then when needed because lead certification even today is very stringent and hard, but it almost killed me. I mean, it was binders of paperwork and documentation, like to the point where, you know, I'm a guy that does video. You send me a long email, I'm calling you because I, <laughs> right. There you go, Mario. It, it was like five times thicker than that. But I used to always say back then, green is gray, mm -hmm. right? I, that was my term. Green is gray because most people didn't understand it. Um, 
And I think having what you have on the screen, right, you know, what we have on the screen right there and, and what we have going on is so relevant to what Mark just said about today. People not only starting to understand it, they starting to believe it. And they're starting, it's starting to be part of their, their very fabric of how they're made and how they're mm -hmm. built, especially this newer generation coming up. So us old folks, you know, we're still, and even myself are, you know, I'm fuddling around with it, but the younger generation really is paying attention to it and, and getting it. So I think even with Pepper Construction, just reading your mission statement, it's for the people now, but it's really for that next generation that's going to be able to really take advantage of what you guys are working on. That's when my you build story. buildings when you when you create structures and and when you also work with existing structures, you're you know you're you're doing that for a huge timeline. So this is going to be affecting the kids of the kids of the kids. Uh, Dave, if you wouldn't mind putting that graphic back up, besides what you said, the portion on the bottom in white that's that is an exceptional statement as well. It is. Uh, you want to mm -hmm. read it, Dave? You're yeah, better. Right. At, oh, you just passed it. At Pepper, the yeah, one on at top Pepper, there. we don't believe safety is proprietary as we find innovative solutions that make our teams safer. We're sharing them with our industry. Learn more about safety at Pepper. Wow. That's the magic, magic part. Sharing it with the industry, Juanita. That's mm -hmm. a really awesome thing. A proclamation from from your company uh it warms my heart like i'm tickled right now I, i'm, I'm I, playing this i'm sorry i'm gonna play this mark you can keep talking but i'm seeing virtual uh, no one wants to hear me <laughs> <laughs> can you hear that on your end mark loud and clear brother the challenge, the challenge with with training training and specifically, and specifically safety, safety training, training is that, is that it's redundant. it's redundant. It happens, it happens over and over and over. True innovation, True innovation really happens from collaborating, collaborating outside, outside of your individual, individual silo. silo. Talking with Dan, our safety, safety director, director. We really started, really started trying, trying to brainstorm ways, ways, ways that technology, technology could really, could really help, with help with safety. How, how could her department, her department help my department? I and I remember, I remember quickly, quickly landing, landing on virtual, virtual reality, reality safety. safety. Uh, echo file through your mic. Uh, my mic is, uh, I'll have to mute. Something, Dave, something that we both, both liked and we, we both, both saw the potential, potential of. of. And, and even, even at, at that time, we both believed believe that we could get there. Pepper's dedication, dedication to safety really revolves, revolves around everybody's involvement in, in the program, program from top, top to bottom. It sounds cliche, but, but really from, from our newest PD all the way, way up to our president is responsible and, and held accountable for their involvement in safety. And really, really shout out our president. Uh, leads by example. Pepper is really invested in technology as a company, not only from a software and hardware perspective, but I have a massive team underneath me that's really helping be an extension of all these project teams. I think Pepper is allowing me to kind of have that freedom sometimes where it's like, here's a, a problem, but how, you know, we don't have the, the answer to it. And what do you suggest? It's not always, here's what we're thinking. It's kind of like, here's a, a big picture issue, you know, where are some thoughts on how to reach that goal or, or what are some areas that you could see utilizing technology to solve a problem. When we introduce a technology to teams, the goal is that it should make their job safer or easier. And therefore, really collaborating with the field and collaborating with other groups outside of our team has helped make that successful. We showed our VR module to our field superintendents, our field leaders, then we got some really great feedback from them. I mean, that's key. It might make sense to me, it has to make sense to the people doing the work. That program matches uh, the the scope, the size, the the structure, the job. I was actually on that project. Everything was like that. You know, you really had people working above you in the core. You really had a thousand things all over the place. You could trip over the cables, the uh, the stub ups. We created those based upon our experience. I went through our injury history, and then you know, added beacons to address those trends. Pepper didn't pull any punches as far as trying to imply that, you know, there's there's no danger of anybody working above you. There's 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 no danger of you knocking into something and it, you know, hurting the fellow you're working with or the, the lady that you're working with. Real life experience is the best kind of training. So immersing them in a virtual reality environment is the closest thing you can do safely to really accomplish those goals. Unless you're willing to look for new technology, new processes, new programs that are out there, you're gonna be left behind. And things you never thought were possible 
are now possible. Originally, we used to have very scheduled meetings with our safety and our quality team to really talk about technology. What we're seeing now is we don't even need to have those scheduled meetings because it's just a continuous dialogue that's happening. We really feel like we're one big team together now and it's not forced, it's just naturally happening. And the virtual reality safety training is just one piece and one successful story of our collaboration. We're so excited to see how this can keep growing. How cool is that? So sorry, I, I know I Juanita, I took us way off course, but I saw that. I'm like, wow, safety. But you know, it's <laughs> such a hot topic. And the reason yeah. I wanted to show it was because we can use technology, we can use data, we can use all of this information. And I'm sure there's something on other things in there as well that show, but that's the that's the key to us moving this forward is being able to utilize the tools that are out there to be better than we were yesterday. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm glad you get to see the some of the people I get to work with. Um, we have an amazing, I, it's amazing to get to work with some really great people. You saw Dan Ruan, the safety director, and Jen Seworth, who's their virtual team lead. And, you know, um, it, it's great to work with people that are passionate about this and, and are internalizing that mission statement. You know, yeah. that we're trying to make the built environment, you know, better for everyone. And um, it's what we do and what, what we're, we're working on together as a team. Um, and I want to also want to address too how, um, and Dan Ruan's presented on this too, is, you know, the job site as a workplace and how much that's important for health. Um, it's temporary, it's a temporary time for a building, but it's a long, long-term experience for our tradespeople yeah. and our well, project you know, management the, team. The, the hairs on my arm stood up when the guy, you know, you saw the, the MGO mm -hmm. or the plywood fall, and then you saw the, the girders and the stakes on the ground. And, and wow, a, a, a definition of human health that we mm -hmm. take for granted is if the workers aren't protected, they can't make you healthy buildings. Right. It, it, like it, it, it has never crossed my mind. I mean, Dave and I have both been on rough job sites and rough off sites. Um, yeah. that, it, the, typically, when you see a, tra a training, a safety training video, there's no hazards, right? It's all mm -hmm. like butterflies and, and flowers and birds chirping, right? It's just a glorious setting. That was real. And then that other comment that the Gale made is, everything is a continued discussion. Mm -hmm. That's a mindset of a, of a company that's leading is to have that continued discussion um, versus let's have a meeting. No, let's continue where we were last time and let's bring that forward. Love that. Wow. Yeah. You guys taking resumes? Dave and I are, <laughs> are, are ready to stop traveling. Yeah, I mean, that, that kind of puts an end to the show. We found everything we needed, right? <laughs> there, folks. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and trust, I mean, it wouldn't cost you much to get either one of us. We'd have so much fun <laughs> just running around, just running around the project. But you know what? You're absolutely right. You know, we just did the uh, set last week down in uh, Baltimore with Mod Logic, uh, and when we go places, we have camera crews that come with us to help us do our on site. And one of the things that we we always have a safety briefing before that, no matter what you do, you do not step out any door on this building without trying to look up first to make sure nobody's up there getting ready to drop something on your head, you know, because people just, it's just the way it goes. All right. So Juanita, let's get into this carbon disaster that we have. Right. And let's talk about this, this carbon drawdown that you are working on. And, uh, and I, and I think I want to understand where do you begin on something like this in a company that like, like, like pepper, like where do you start this process? And then also tell us, we want to know what are your biggest headaches and your hurdles? Because there might be just some people in our audience that say, well, I got an answer for that. So we'd love to yeah. try and have a collaborative discussion on this. And if you're out there and you got questions, put them in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in. Uh, Steve Basics out there. I have no idea what those coordinates are, Steve, but I hope it's warm and you got a cold margarita somewhere in your hand or some <laughs> fruity drink. Yeah. So, uh, so we were inspired largely by... Um, Paul Hawkins project drawdown, um, you know, it was originally, uh, you know, it was intended as a, as a um, kind of handbook to draw down and with a ranking of, uh, of drawdown solutions. 
um, they've moved away from that, but uh, from the ranking, I mean, and, and you know, I, it was great to hear Paul Hawken talk about that too. Like he's like, well, you know, it's really easy to say we'll start at the top, um, but if that solution that I can I can actually address now is further down, you address it, right? It's you start where you are, you start where you can, um, and it's better to start where you can and make a difference, whether which may seem incremental, but when you start thinking about how long that building is going to be there and how many occupants um, that's going to have an imp that are going to be uh, have an impact on on those occupants, it it gets to be exponential. And if you start now, um, it's worth starting now smaller than trying to wait till it's perfect and and going big, right? So. Um, so we were started but we were inspired by uh project drawdown and that book and we started with four solutions uh, we started with uh refrigerants um, insulation rooftop solar and water savings so wow yeah wow. water savings those are those are a great four to start um Take us through that. Uh, take us through that. Uh, it, th that decision was made. We get why it was made, but tell the folks that don't get why those four mm -hmm. were picked. Uh, go ahead and dive yeah. deep on that. So you have to remember too that that we started that journey in um, 2019, right? So okay. it was a different time, um, and so we started with refrigerants because that was that was definitely number one in uh, in that conversation, in that game plan and ranking from Project Drawdown. And it's because refrigerants, um, when you, so it, it's also too, like, do we start with talking about carbon emissions and the greenhouse gas effect? Um, so we, we do have to start that with that to make sure we understand that, right? So through the course of, you know, our environment and the uh, atmosphere around the earth, and natural processes, CO2 is emitted, right, from the air we breathe. Um, and there, there's a natural exchange of CO2 and oxygen with, you know, in ecosystems, right? But when we start burning fossil fuels, we end up with more CO2. And so CO2 is naturally around the Earth in our atmosphere to keep some of the heat from, from the Earth in our atmosphere to keep us warm, right? But when we have excess CO2, it keeps it traps more heat and it traps in our atmosphere. But then there are things like green other greenhouse gas emissions, right? And refrigerants, which you know, they we measure global warming potential in terms of CO2's global warming potential. And refrigerants, there are refrigerants that we're currently using that are 10,000 times the global warming potential of CO2, right? Which is unbelievable. Like it's, it's, it's in, it, that's why it was identified as number one and why we're, you know, um, in that bipartisan act at the end of last year, um, manufacturers, industry were all on board to start phasing them out. And, and now, um, and now uh, the EPA has, set a and committed a timeline to that after you know the Kigali um, protocol was was started and so we're phasing out those refrigerants because they have such a huge impact and so we were we were kind of trying to start at, we were ahead of the curve with trying to start that conversation with with um, clients about refrigerants and starting to to choose when they could some alternatives to to refrigerants um, so now the um manufacturers are catching up with that and we're seeing now more we're going to see in the coming months and years how much more options there will be with alternative refrigerants so that that's been exciting um to have that with, conversation with that, with that Juanita is it also about the the potential for leakage throughout yeah. the line sets and systems that that is getting out it's not so if it's we tend to think if it's in a tube, it's in there. Why is it hurting anyone? Yeah. Right. But yeah. there, there is leakage. And then let's say that there's a retrofit and that system yeah. comes out. Where does that go? Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly right. So um, in, in the ideal system, it's completely enclosed and it's never released into the environment. But the reality is, and especially the more piping there is, the more potential there is for leakage. Um, and the greater the charge to the greater, you know, uh, opportunity there is for leakage. So that's always the biggest concern, right? Is um, that leakage throughout operations of the of the mechanical equipment, and then having to recharge it later. And that's, that's something we, we have to talk to, to uh, our clients about too, is especially if you're phasing out a refrigerant, and you're planning to have this system for decades. Uh, what does that look like if you're going to have to recharge it? Um, it's for the most part, you're not able to just swap out refrigerants because they're designed um, with a specific refrigerant in mind. So it's not like you could just swap it out later. It, it won't work that way um, and it won't be as efficient. So, uh, you know, so that's always part of that conversation about refrigerants. So that's exciting to see, you know, that phase out and to see, um, you know, industry on board for, for that, especially. So the refrigerants was just one of them and number one, um, and then rooftop solar. It was exciting to see how many how many clients are very excited about incorporating solar installations, yeah. and and also being able to, especially now with um, with the incentives here in Illinois, and we're seeing that in other states as well. Those incentives and tax credits around um, you know those solar installations to reduce those upfront costs. Um, so that's been really exciting to see too. Um, and that's been something that we've we've been looking at and just even presenting it as part of a conversation because they, you know, sometimes clients don't think it's even a possibility and they don't right. see how much how much they could save in operating costs just in generating, you know, a chunk of their their um, energy on site. Your other your other line item was insulation. And so mm -hmm. when the envelope is handled, then the amount of solar renewables that are needed. Mm -hmm. Exactly. is a lower, more achievable level. So those two work mm -hmm. hand in hand Definitely. if you do them in the right order, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, and, and we have uh, we have somebody that understands the solar game very well. That's Andrew Seeley. He's, he's joining us and saying hello today. Uh, and this is somebody that has a whole entire property. I think it's seven buildings, maybe nine buildings, all off-grid to include his power tools. Oh, wow. Everything off. And he collects his own water. Yep. Oh, so, yeah. um, he, he's definitely there. Mark, why don't we take a moment here? Uh, I'm going to go into some comments, but I want to get to something that Stephen uh, Basic uh, says first. He's, well, first he says, Mark, all my training exercises are a live fire. <laughs> well, That's a Marine talking for you. There you go. I got I got I got some good old uh, machine gun fire for you next 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 week. Steve, uh, be prepared for the machine gun fire. All right. Juanita. Do you bring your environmental steward stewardship to arch to the architect's table? How do they receive it? And then there's a follow up question with that. Do you ever find pepper construction between the client and the architect? What's your thoughts oh. on that? So that's something that you know we're we're working with the architect on that, right? So we're trying to have that conversation together. Uh, we've been able to share our experience. Um, we also say that, you know, we're able to bring our experience to in pre-construction. So that's one group we haven't talked about yet is our estimating group that help in those conversations too, um, in weighing those options. Um, and that's something that we can bring that, that the design team right. isn't necessarily able to talk, talk to. Um, but yeah, we work with them. We work um, with the design team on those things and, and they're often, we're trying to make that happen too. And we're believers in, in doing the right thing and working towards carbon drawdown as well. That's a really important thing. I don't know that we've covered it yet. Dave is pre-con, right? The whole pre-con phase is, no, we haven't. You're right. Is, is, is assembling that together. And well, that kind of speaks to some of your BIM background right there. <laughs> yeah. <you>? Yeah. <laughs> What what are what are some of the 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 biggest roadblocks that you're finding, one? You know, like from your end, you look at all this data and all the science behind it. What are you seeing as some of the biggest drawbacks, not only from our industry, but maybe even from from uh, the people outside of our industry? You know, or is there some drawbacks there? I think there's a. 
I see one thing I do see is like a misconception of what green is. I think there is there's an assumption that it's more expensive. There is an assumption that it's it's um it you know that it's you're doing it for the for good, but they're not necessarily realizing that there is a return on that investment. You can make a financial case for it, right? Um, I think there's there's that, um, and there's also like the you know we talked we touched on that earlier, um, but manufacturers disclosing information about their products, yeah. um, and and that movement towards that to so that we're able to to get a better sense of that, and especially in this carbon in the conversation around carbon, um, you know how can they better disclose that information so we understand. Um, and able to weigh not only the health impact, but the carbon impact of a material too as part of that discussion. Big time. That was a conversation we had a long time ago, Dave, when Brandon Weiss was here. And and we were talking about at times in our life where we've been in classrooms, and again, not to jump into schools again or give a bad rap, but sometimes we were falling asleep and tired in classrooms. And it wasn't because... Yeah we were bored. It was because of the environment around us. You know, it was getting hot and things started baking a bit more um, and and things leach out into the air. So, yeah, you're exactly right. Green isn't about having a photograph of a tree. Um, it, 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 that's why you're here today. It's about the human health. It's about what we're putting, just like what we put in our bodies, what we put in our buildings Make this happen, make this happen, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, if, if if I look at this another way, Juanita, because like it keeps coming back to suppliers and do we get the correct information? Do we get the correct data from them for what we're trying to achieve? And, you know, there, there's probably, and, and from their aspect of financial reason, um, why it's they don't want to put out too much information. There's obviously... IP or intellectual property stuff as well. But wouldn't it be great if there was a way that, you know, we incentivize the government programs incentivize, and maybe there is, and you have the answer to this, um, for these companies to be able to update research R&D for their products. So it's, it's not so hard to do, you know, because a lot of times this comes down to a retooling and it gets very expensive for them. Yeah. Right. And and they spend probably just as much money with legal teams reworking the issue to get it, you know, to put whatever information they want to put out there so it works on their behalf. You know, so do we look at it differently and, and try and have programs in place that, you know, we lead by example? I always say our government needs to lead by example. They can't tell you what to do. That that that's not how we work in this country. But they can sure lead the way. They can sure use offsite construction and say, hey, look, we saved. Two hundred thousand dollars versus we went over two million dollars, but we don't know where the money went, right? They could lead by example, which I think other people would start following, especially if they see them being successful. Yeah, yeah, I think, um, I, yeah, I feel like um, there are definitely databases of information that's already being collected, right? EPA has such a wide, uh, you know, breadth of data that they're already starting from. You know, I think that would be really interesting to see, to see sort of a, an initiative by an organ, a government organization like the EPA to, to help with that process of those environmental product declarations. Because I think too, like we have that in the industry, but people that you know, occupants outside the industry aren't necessarily aware of that information or the health product declarations as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know that, you know, someone that's looking at products for their home is knows that that stuff is available, but only from certain manufacturers, right? It's not everyone. That's why in some of these, uh, we'll just use lead, for example, uh, buildings to where they have that dashboard there mm -hmm. and it's, 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 it's a, it's a teaching moment about what's going on and why the materials uh, are part of it. And then there's the whole other data that you touched on, uh, Juanita, about the operational energy of the building. And so people realize that their actions can positively or negatively affect the mm -hmm. building. Like 
there's some buildings uh, that have that sensor on that if your window's open, you, your mm -hmm. AC doesn't work, right? Right. Doesn't work. <laughs> so um, it's a it's a it's pretty it's pretty robust that we get to have that. Tying the windows to your air conditioner, boy, that'd make my kids <laughs> mad. I, 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 you know, uh, a lot of people say that when you have teenagers in the house, your your water heater gets used a bit more. And why isn't there a, a shut off at four or five minutes? Right. Um, yeah. Well, I, 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 I think uh, I think that would be awesome, but I don't know if that's going to get passed. <laughs> Well, listen, why don't we take a moment and say hi to a few people? Because we are live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. We got some people trying to sell us uh, sell us uh, people on Twitch. Want more followers, Mark? I got a guy in the comments here, but we're not going to put that up. Anywho. Uh, no, we don't buy followers, and uh, all of our presenters are awesome people. You can't pay us to come on the show. Amen. That's exactly right. All right. So, Mark, I had to make one comment because you really messed up earlier. I, I, I got to. All right. Here, right. For you, you cannot say it's making the hair in my arm stand up. It should be it's making the hair in my beard stand up. Right. And you need to get a static thing that you can pull up and you can pull your beard. So static, it? Then, I need, uh, wait, then, I, then I need beard wipers to get right. it up my eyes. That's right. <laughs> That's right. All right. So we got Adam White, Mark, Bill, uh, small. I can't do it. It's, it's Mark Bare Naked Willie. You got to change that so it pops up right, dude. Willie is a legend, he says. He is a legend. We're all legends in our own minds, but he's truly a legend. He's been in this industry a long time, knows a lot of people, and he's pretty smart. I love it. I'm talking about you, Mark. I'm tired. That's what I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have, uh, we got Buzz in the house. He's talking about your T studs back there with Andrew Sealy. They're going back and forth, yellow, black, white, all the T studs in your sight. Yes, yes, yes. We got Mateo joining us from Louisiana. How are you, Mateo with Foxy? Good to see you. And then Steve Basic, he always sends coordinates. He's joining us from somewhere. Um, I don't know where that somewhere is, though, Mark. If you could look that up and get back to us at the end of the show. My I guess is that was that was somewhere he was stationed. Lake Ferguson. There it is. It's there it Lake is. Ferguson. Okay. Get, down, get a little further down the uh, line. And, of course, we had some echo going, hello, hello, <laughs> Buzz says. Hey, echo, I know, echo, Buzz. Echo, we're, echo, we're playing echo. with some new stuff with some fun stuff. All right. So, oh, see, Mark, see, this this is not good. I didn't know you were paying Steve Basic to show up and be your friend. I I, I, I pay him in pennies, right? So that is <laughs> – <laughs> You get the jingle. Love that. Yeah, for sure. So, Juanita, if there was anything out there that you needed help with, that you were looking for an answer to or something you're struggling with in your research right now, what would that be? Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, and it could be more than one thing, thing, right? Just it could be more than one thing, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm um, or it could be nothing. You could just say, hey, I'm, I'm just wicked smart. I got it all figured out. And No. Well, no, right? I think that part of it is collaboration you know i think it's bringing more people to the table to talk through it um it's a conversation it's not like it's one solution fits all and that's the solution forever right <laughs> that is that, that's that, you our know, favorite what? word on this show right carbon disaster is our least favorite word <laughs> collaboration it's our favorite word it is our favorite word. <laughs> I don't know, Mark. I don't know if these sound effects are working or not. I hope everybody, can you guys out in the audience hear our sound effects? I mean, we, we tried the, so Juanita, here's something you probably don't know and Pepper hasn't figured out yet, but we have, we have uh, scratch and sniff audio and video, so I can oh, smell right? what Mark's doing and Mark can smell what I'm doing every day on this show, but everybody. Can you smell my the, ginger beer, Dave? <laughs> I can smell it. It's good. It's very gingery, Mark. It's very gingery. It is. You know, we're, we're trying to patent it, but we can't find anybody to, to, to patent our technology before we no one it. takes our calls. It's just. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it is it is it is collaboration. And when it has got a meeting, she's got to collaborate on it. Two minutes. Bring him on the show, Juanita. They can sit down next to you. Let's have a conversation here. Right. <laughs> Listen, we do all the back behind the scenes stuff. Well, listen, we're, we're just about at our hour, uh, but you know, Juanita, I think that what you're working on and the initiative you're doing is amazing. I, I have a couple questions about Pepper Construction. How big is Pepper Construction and how long have they been around? 
Uh, I've been around over 90 years. 90? Uh, yeah. Um, so we've, uh, well, over 90, we have offices in Illinois, Milwaukee, um, Ohio, uh, Columbus, and uh, Cincinnati in Indianapolis. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and their focus uh, has, has it, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't 90 years ago, the focus it was then as it is now. At what point did the company make that, you know, that, that cultural turn? towards, you know, doing what you guys are doing now with the uh, So we started with the carbon drawdown in 2019. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, got it, got it, got it. And and, it, and not only is it becoming an initiative, it's pretty much taken over your whole website and the entire culture of the company. Yeah, yeah, it has. Yeah, it has. sure. It's been a how, build up to that, so. How big is the company staff-wise? Oh, that's a good question. I, you know, I actually don't know. I can't answer well, that. Yeah. That's all right. The yeah, stuff yeah. you did give us was awesome. <laughs> you know, it's um, funny. You have the training programs and getting like Mark said with staff. You know, are are you finding it hard, or maybe you don't know the answer because this isn't really what you do? But are, are you know finding people that want to work there, or is it kind of no. one of those things where people want to work there? Yeah, I think we 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 have people want to work here. They believe in the mission too. See, that's the key, Mark. I'm telling you, between technology, which they're using, and all that VR and fun stuff <laughs> they're doing, but yeah. then you know this next generation is really focused on the environment. And I think if you have yeah. a culture that talks about that, I bet a lot of them would give up a higher salary to be part of a better culture. You know, it, you mentioned 2019, Juanita, but even before that, uh, it is it, in all my years with Illinois Green, there's always been a large presence of Pepper um you know incredible leaders in the company and then the third time that green build came to chicago pepper was uh you know pretty much the largest uh demonstration in green mm -hmm. build history i believe by by showing a um quote unquote job site uh offsite produced unit of uh everything was calculated dave every wow. Everything from the outside to the inside, all the materials uh, were involved. So that was that was that was way before that, and that was a monumental step for. Is that for, the net zero trailer you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it was gorgeous on top of it, but you know, like all the materials and the energy used, beautiful, yeah. beautiful piece. Yeah, that's uh, that's been amazing. It it. it uh, it is a really fun, well, like we talked about with job sites as workplaces, right? It right. makes such a huge difference. Not only that in when it comes to the occupant experience, but also the energy use, energy and water use. Right. So, all right. Well, um, <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. You know you what? Got, I know. You got your I got to get going. You, got, you go do your thing, Juanita. Okay. Thank you so much for joining sure, us. Bye -bye. Mark and I will wrap it up here. You have a good one. Bye now. All right. That was pretty cool, Mark. I see this on 11 16th. Why don't we talk about it real quick? Just so audience knows what's going on. You put it in the uh, comments. Yeah. And uh, I'm so thankful for today, the, the stuff you put forward and, you know, everything Juanita shares, Dave just rolls right off her tongue. Right. Nice. It uh, yeah. she's entrenched in it. Uh, so yeah, Tuesday, uh, you know, you and I had our year anniversary a long time ago. Tuesday is the one year anniversary of construction tech. So, um, really happy. I don't know what they said, but they sounded exciting. Um, <laughs> we're, we're excited about that. I hope you join us, uh, on Tuesday, Dave, and, and, and your big network there. And, uh, you know, we're not, we're not doing anything special, but, uh, we're pleased. And then next Friday, part two, speaking of carbon disasters, uh, how to avoid them. Well, yeah. Uh, we have yeah, Chris Mark Magwood part two, one week from today, Dave. I think, I think it's absolutely awesome. All right, cool. So we got a lot coming up. We will have coffee with Dave, uh, in the morning tomorrow, but, uh, um, I may have a slew of children with me tomorrow, Mark. I might have a awesome. slew of children, which ought to be a good thing. Um, the Cooper so. kids are getting together, huh? Uh, we got, we got the whole clan in town for, uh, for a family event that happened, but, uh, I, I told him, I said, come on, we'll go camp because I'm, I'm parked over at uh, Fort Dix on the Army base. Got and it. 
it's right at range 14. So it's where they train. It's where they kick down doors to do their training. And on the other side of the road is where the artillery range is. And you can just lay there and the whole world just lights up and blows up. So they're kind of excited. They want to come stay over at the base. So, so are your girls going to wear the hockey equipment and kick down some doors too? They, 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 hey, listen, they might, they might run in with their, with their own M16s. Who knows? You know, <laughs> this, this thing, age, you, you can't tell, right? I don't ask questions. But hey, listen, it's been a lot of fun, Mark. Uh, I'm glad we got to add a few more of these uh, sound effects in. I'm having some fun with it. We're going to come up with some more. I got to do a machine gun next week for Mr. Uh, Stephen Basic, which I think will be a, would be a lot of fun. Uh, Buzz always, Buzz says applause, y'all. Thank you so much, Buzz. We love it. Yep. How about you, Mark? What else you got going this week other than busy, busy, busy? Uh, well, I know you're traveling this week. I'm traveling this week. We're 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 crossing, we're crossing highways the opposite directions. It's too bad. I would have loved to have a, a corned beef on rye with you with some sauerkraut and Swiss. But um, uh, we'll you and I will touch base probably on Tuesday before um the other show and uh, yes, sir. You know. Uh, Wednesday, are you live on Wednesday this week? We are live Wednesday this week. I don't, I don't have that up in front of me. I jumped right into this one. Today. I, I, yeah. I was just asking, cause I know, you know, I know a little bit about your travel, so I didn't know if there was a, there was a different thing going on. And I really enjoyed, uh, the other broadcast that you had up and I look forward to having coffee with you tomorrow. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. we got a lot of fun things planned coming up in 2021. We're going to change up our show a little bit. Mark and I have been talking about that to make it even more fun and engaging and exciting. And I hope everybody stays tuned because uh, between now and January 1st, there's going to be some reworking Monday. I've redid some of the channel and through the tech stuff. So it's it's all just to bring more more value to everybody. So don't go anywhere, Mark. I appreciate you and everybody else out there. Thanks for the thumbs up. Thanks for following us on YouTube. Please follow Mark and everything that he's doing in his adventures. And congratulations to the one year event uh, and to everybody else out there that does what we do. And that's share the knowledge. My name is Dave Cooper, Dave Cooper live. And that is Mark bare naked Willie next week. His beard will stand up, not the hair on his arms. I'm excited to see how he makes that happen. Bye everybody.